nice keyboard. Is that the one that was donated, Scotty? No, that's Parker's. Oh, that's Parker's? Yeah. You have one that is being donated, I right? Have one that is being Which is donated. awesome. That's yeah. That is wonderful. So I uh, just feel bad for those of you that did not participate in the barbecue picnic yesterday because it was awesome, fantastic, fabulous. And I want to thank uh, Billy and Leo and Steve and Anthony and all of the, anybody else that I might have missed that participated in the food was unbelievable. Good. Wasn't it good? Yes. <laughs> Steve's father uh, actually donated the brisket, right? And he smoked so it, and oh my God, it was wonderful. It was really Salads were great. Ham hamburger, Anthony cooked the hamburgers. They were fabulous. So thank you for doing that. It was really a marvelous day. I was presented with a wonderful, which is sitting across the hall. You ought to go and look at it. It is a plaque that has a Bible with a sword on it, which is just beautiful and I appreciate that Billy thank you for your your heart um, thank you for everything you do for Mary's Hope it's beyond belief what you do so thank you very much so I wanted to talk to you this morning about um, scripture in 2nd Corinthians 4 how many of you like the new podium it seems a little short but I think and a little skinny but I think we'll get through anyway so um, Gail where have you been girl <laughs> you've been around hi Lauren how are you nice to see both of you here this morning that's awesome I always like seeing your pretty faces <laughs> all right so 2nd Corinthians 4 says this therefore seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy we faint not so what he's saying is he knows that we have mercy and so we're going to keep on keeping on we're not going to faint we're not we don't give up but we have renounced the hidden things. We have given up the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but in manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world has blinded the unbelievers' minds that they should not discern the truth, preventing them from seeing the illuminating light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image and likeness of God. Ladies and gentlemen, do not be blinded by the truth. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. And verse 7 says this, and this is where I'm trying to get to this morning. But we, that's you and that's me, have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of ourselves. And that verse in the Amplified Bible is so much more powerful because it says, however, we possess this precious treasure, a precious treasure, the divine light of the gospel in frail human vessels of earth, that the grandeur and exceeding greatness of the power may be shown to be of God and not from ourselves. When we have power within us and we use that power in the right direction, that is not of our own doing. That is not of ourselves. That is from God. And verse 8 says, We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. You know, it's funny. This Bible of ours that was written thousands of years ago has profound meaning of statements of what is happening in our earth today. Just this past week, I'm sure most of you have heard that North Korea launched a nuclear uh, missile in what they called a, quote, test. They actually launched a nuclear missile. We certainly are perplexed about this doing. World Headline says this. World War III 
fears as USA and China warn of serious consequences after North Korea launched nuclear mi missiles. Another headline says this point, I can't pronounce their names, but this Yang Yang's nuclear task <laughs> clearly reaffirmed the North Korean regime's recklessness and its obsession with nuclear arms. South Korean President uh, said Friday that Kim Jong-un does not listen to any voice. He does not listen to any voice. And this leads us to view his mental state as uncontrollable. This guy of North Korea is uncontrollable. He, in his hands, has nuclear missiles. And this was prophesied in the Bible thousands of years ago. When we study the book of Ezekiel and Daniel and Revelation, and we learn what those scriptures say, this, this is in the Bible of what is going on today, of North Korea's potential attack against the United States and China. And all of these things were prophesied, and yet we are perplexed by these things, of these goings on in the world today. Yet God tells those that believe that we have treasure. We have a treasure inside of us that we should not fear for all of these things because He alone, God alone, He alone will deliver His people. We do not fear. We have a treasure inside, and if we believe, we will withstand anything. I looked up the definition of treasure in the Webster's Dictionary because I wanted to know its exact meaning, and it says, as most of us would guess, it means wealth, as money, jewels, and precious metals stored up and hoarded like a buried treasure, something of great worth of value. It even relates to a person, a person that is rare and precious, a collection of precious things. And so we don't understand the fact that God has given us, He has given you, He has given me, His power, a treasure inside of us. We need to be aware of what He has given to us today. In Matthew 6, 19, it says, Lay not up for yourself treasures upon the earth where moth and rust uh, will corrupt them and where thieves break in and steal. But gather and heap up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth or dust or worm consume and destroy and where thieves do not break through and steal. <coughs> now listen, ladies and gentlemen, it tells us this right here. For where your treasure is, there will be your heart also. He is teaching us that we need to have a desire in our heart to learn about God, especially in these last days. We need to be opening up the Word of God, studying Him, finding Him. Where is He? Seeking after Him, knocking so that He will answer the door to the call on our heart. We need to ask Him. We need to get close to Him because this is the treasure that we should be placing in our heart. Possessions and things are of the world. You know, we seek after all of the things that Hollywood shows us. Money, cars, houses. And yet none of these things are going to bring to us the peace that we so desperately are searching after in our hearts. God's treasure chest, His treasure chest is full of the answers of everyday problems that you and I have to overcome. His word inside of you and his word inside of me creates life. It will create healing. It will create happiness. And it will be a gift of love. In Matthew 6.25 it says, Therefore, I tell you. Now listen to this. This is important. I am telling you, stop being perpetually uneasy, anxious, and worried about your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, and about your body, what you shall put on. Is not life greater than food or body? So now listen, I know perfectly well and I understand that life today is full of things that are going on that we do not understand. We are concerned, we are worried. We hear of this leader in North Korea shooting off a nuclear missile for a test 
and we become anxious and we become worried. The world is full of these kinds of problems going on today. I am telling you that if you get the word in your heart, if you will take the time to plant it, you, we need to plant the word. We've got to get it in our heart that nothing, 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 nothing will cause you to fall. How many of you watched 2020 Friday night? A few of you did. And so on 2020, we saw Elizabeth Vargas who gave her testimony. I mean, just think of what gumption that took for her to do that. She actually, you know, is in the limelight, and yet she humbled herself enough to give her testimony of her battle with alcohol. And she mentioned, though, one statement that really caught my ear, and maybe it caught your ear as well, that she really believes uh, one thing contributed to her alcoholism, and that one thing was anxiety. It is easy for us to become anxious about our life, what we're going to eat, what we're going to put on, what about money. How many of us are anxious about money? What are we going to do? Where are we going to work? Uh, how do we get ourselves through this problem that we have? And we build ourselves up into a state of anxiousness that we make ourselves sick. We literally make ourselves sick. We get stomach ailments. We, our stomach becomes nauseated and then pretty soon we have such tension that builds up in our shoulders that we have knots in our shoulders that gives us headaches and we have migraines and we literally make ourselves sick because we are panicked, we are anxious, and we are just depressed. And then once that happens, we lay around and all we do is think about ourselves and we think about the condition that we're in and we compare ourselves to others and then we start wishing, well, I wished I had a car. I wished I had a better car. I wished I had a different place to live in. I wished I had a different job. I wished that I had a boyfriend. Not really, Dick. I don't want to. Go. <laughs> I don't. You know, we lay around, we go, I wish I may, I wish I might have the wish I wished tonight. And that's what we do. We wish. And then we start really feeling bad uh, about ourselves. And we tell ourselves, if I'd been raised in a different home, if I had only gone to college, if my husband treated me better, if my boss only knew what I was going through, if my boss only knew what I was going through, they'd give me a break. If my kids just treated me better, if this and if that. And we have a pity party. And then we invite all of our sorrows to, and our pains to come to the party. And pretty soon we're telling ourselves that it's okay for us to feel bad and it's okay to keep thinking about the past and feeling sorry for ourselves. After all, our flesh likes it. And it does. Our flesh loves pity. Our flesh loves sympathy. Why is it that when, when we get a little hangnail, we can't wait to tell somebody? Look at what's happened to me. Why? Because we want somebody to feel sorry for us. Listen, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. If we would just wake up, we need to wake up. We need to understand that everything that we have need of today is in the Word of God. If we would just put out some effort, if we would just open it up, if we would just realize the power of His Word within us will change our circumstances, it will change our environment, it will change our children, it will change our mate. But we cannot get the Word in us as long as that book is closed. We have to open it up. You know that it is God's good pleasure to give good things to His children. If you are his child today, he is waiting to give you good gifts. But we have to do something. We've got to get the word planted in our heart. The more we study the word, the more understanding we'll get. The more we read his word, the more peace we will have. The more word we read, the more answers we can get. If you can't understand the word, then there's about a million other books that you can pick up and study, and it will help you get understanding. When I was a baby Christian, I didn't understand we even where to start in the Bible. So what I did is I went and I read books, 
And if you are suffering today with depression, if you are suffering today with anxiety, if you are suffering today with illness in your body, there's a wonderful book by Joyce Meyer called Battlefield of the Mind. I tell you what, it has so many answers in there. Now, you don't just read it as a storybook, but you read it as an instruction manual. I had a guy tell me yesterday, he said, I was given the AA book and I was told, don't read it as a story, but read it as this is your instruction manual. And that's what we have to do. So now listen, in Matthew 6.31 it says this. He's telling us, therefore, do not, do not, do not worry and be anxious saying, what are we going to eat or what are we going to drink or what are we going to wear? For the heathen, who is the heathen? What does heathen mean? What? Someone who wants pleasure, oh, only pleasure. Well, an earthly person, a heathen, somebody who doesn't believe, the heathen. For the heathen wish for and crave and diligently seek after all of these things, and yet your heavenly Father well knows that you need them all. But seek for, aim, and strive after, first of all, his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right, and all of these things taken together will be given to you besides. So he says, do not worry or be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will have worries and anxieties of their own. Sufficient for each day is its own trouble. So I'm telling you, he will never ever tell you something that is impossible to do. So what he is saying, it is possible for us to take control over our own mind, over our own thought life, and we need to put it in check. Because if we don't, we will continue to have depression, anxiety, worry, tribulations, trouble, and the list goes on. He is saying we have the ability to stop this, and we need to take that ability from the Word of God and stop doing it. The problem is, is that we hear the things that we need to do, but we don't stop doing the thing that is bringing us the problem. And we need to get sick and tired enough to where we will learn a new way. It is when we walk in His Word and start controlling our thought life that we can change and become the men and women that He so desires us to be. In John 16, 33, it says, I have told you these things. He's saying, I've told you these things. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But take courage, my friend, my children. I have overcome the world. He's overcome the world. And so he said, look at what I have done. Let me be your teacher. Let me be your model. Walk after me. Let me show you how to do these things. You know, when I was a child, I thought like a child. And when I became an adult, God expects me to grow up. I have to grow up. And if I grow up taking on the Word of God, I am going to grow up in a way that I cannot fail. Yes, you will still have some trials and some tribulations, but we know that with Him we will overcome them because He is our overcomer. We have to grow up. It is time for us to do that. I, I can give myself 100 and 101 excuses not to do what I'm telling you to do. I mean, after all, look at my past. I was sexually abused for 8 to 10 years as a child. I mean, that in itself would give an excuse for me to behave badly. And in addition to that, I lost my sister when she was only 37 years old. A tragedy. She was my best friend. Six months later, I lost my grandmother. I've lost my father. I've had breakups and dysfunction in my family. You all think your families are dysfunctional. You have no idea. Uh, I walked into a family member's house yesterday, and I, was, I became physically nauseated and emotionally drained within five minutes of walking in the relative's house. Uh, there's dysfunction everywhere. So we all have excuses to act badly. We all have excuses to lay around and worry and feel sorry for ourselves. But is that what we should be doing? Or do we really want to change? You know, I can say, woe is me. And, and I've had pity parties. I've had so many pity parties that I invite the entire forest of emotions to come. Some of my pity parties have lasted days at a time. But um, we have to go on. 
I am testifying to you today that, that none of that will get you into a better place. None of it will. Standing in front of the mirror, crying and making yourself cry louder and longer is not going to get you into a better place. All that does is hinder your growth. It stops you from moving forward with your life. It will not heal you. It will cause you to stop. It will cause you to keep worrying and have more anxiety. It will cause you to be more depressed. Our flesh loves it. And we have to take enough time to get determined that we're going to change that. We have to change our stress level. Where your treasure is. Where is your treasure? Where do you want your treasure to be? So this woman went with her husband to the doctor, and he was full of stress and anxiety. And the doctor told the wife, your husband has a very serious disorder. The disorder is a severe stress disorder causing him a high level of anxiety and depression. And she told, he, the doctor told the woman, he said, there's one thing, he's going to die if you don't help him get through this. And he said, what you need to do is when, when you get up in the morning, you need to fix him a very nutritional breakfast. And you got to fix him a healthy lunch too, and then at dinner time, make sure you have a really nice dinner for him. And then, you know, don't bug him about what's going on with you because the more you bug him about what's happening with you, he's just going to get more stressed out. Stop. Don't nag him, you know. You got to be easy on him because this disorder is so bad that if you don't, he's going to he's going to die. And the mo the best thing that you can do is you need to make love to him several times a week. And uh, he, sh okay. he said, if you do this for the next 10 months to a year, your husband is going to get healed of this, and he is going to live. So the husband and wife are on their way home after the doctor's visit, and the husband said, so what did the doctor say? And the wife looked, and she said, I'm sorry, honey, but you're going to die. <laughs> sitting down now. Oh my God, this is over. Isaiah 45.3. God is saying this to you. This is for you right now. He said, I will give you hidden treasures, riches stored in secret places so that you may know that I am the Lord, the God of Israel, who summons you by name. He knows how many hairs you have on your head. He loves you so greatly. He, kn he knows how many hairs you have on your head. He, he knows your name. <coughs> he has hidden treasures for you. And he wants to give those to you today. I was talking to a man yesterday at our barbecue. And I said, you know, how do you maintain, what do you think the key to maintaining sobriety is? And he said, participate. Uh Participate. We have to participate. Participate in meetings. Participate in your program. Get involved. Look for ways to be grateful. Be grateful for what you have. Be grateful. That word grateful is such a healing word because we're so, uh, our society is so much about what we don't have, what we don't get, what we can't do. We're always thinking on the negative side instead of the positive side. If we could just learn to be grateful. Get up in the morning and thank God that he's given you another day. Get up in the morning and say, thank you, Father, that this is going to be a beautiful day for me today. Something good is going to happen to me today. Take the positive stance instead of the negative stance. But we're such a negative society that we don't do the thing that we know that we're supposed to do. That's why when I, I've said this before, when I uh, look at people that come to Jumpstart, some of you come, you kind of want to come. Some of you come, you kind of like to come. Others of you come, you really don't want to be here. But I'll tell you what, you need to learn to participate. Participate in the program. Participate in, in who, who you've, you've been 
given much, give back. Maybe by your presence, maybe by you just being here today, you'll help your neighbor. They'll look at you and go, well, so-and-so is here. You know, I'll be there to help support them. We need to participate. Get motivated. Learn a new way. That's why when I look around, I like to see people taking notes. Because there might be one little tiny thing that God says to you this morning that will change your life forever. And if you don't write it down, you probably won't remember what it is. Participate. You go to a meeting. Sit up in your chairs. Act like you are participating. Act differently. Don't lay around. Get up. Be motivated. People there are trying to get something to you that is going to help heal your heart. Participate. Don't sit in the room with your eyes closed. That is a sign that you're not paying attention. Don't act tired. Listen, sometimes we have to pretend. Sometimes we have to fake it until we make it. These things are new to us. And so when they're new, you just act differently. Be the actor or actress that is on the Hollywood screen and pretend. Pretend to be the different person. Dress differently. Sometimes when we start on our outside, it gets to our inside. Iron your clothes in the morning. Get up and be somebody different. When you get up in the morning, if you're tired, say, Father, I ask that you quicken my mortal body. Help me to be focused today. Help me to pay attention today. It's when we start acting different that God will have somebody that he can work with. He can work with you in that regard. Why? Because he's seeing that you're motivated. He is seeing that you want to focus. He is seeing that you want to do things different. So fake it until you make it. It works. I'm telling you right here. I'm testimony. Will Rogers says, even if you're on the right track, you'll get run over if you stay there. Even if you're on the right track, you will get run over if you stay there. Most of us really never focus because we don't know the power of focus. We constantly feel a kind of irritating, mind-racing chaos that's going on up here in our brains. How many of you feel that way or have ever felt like your mind just races? It's hard for you to sit still. It's hard for you to pay attention. It's hard for you to focus. There was an interesting motivational talk on this subject given by former Dallas Cowboys coach Jimmy Johnson to his football players. This is what he told them. I told them that if I laid a two-by-four plank across the room, everybody there would walk across it and not fall because our focus would be on walking on the two-by-four plank. But if I put that same two-by-four plank ten stories high in the air between two buildings, only a few would make it because the focus would be on failing and falling. Focus is everything. The team that is more focused today is the team that will win this game. I'm saying the same thing to you. The team that is focused here today, you will be the one that will win the game of life. If you can focus, if you can get God's word planted in your heart, learn his precepts, keep them watered daily, not every other day, but daily, you will win the game of life. Johnson told his team not to be distracted by the crowd. I'm saying do not be distracted by the trials and tribulations in your life. Don't be distracted by the media or the possibility of losing. Quit focusing on losing. Quit focusing on your past. Quit focusing on yesterday's news. Stop focusing there. Do not do that. But focus on each play of the game. Listen, life is a game, and we need to focus on each and every play of the game itself, just as if it were a good practice session. That day, the Cowboys won the game by 52 to 17, and that's what we need to do today. We need to focus on our game. Stop looking at yesterday's news. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. God is calling you today to fill your treasure chest with his word. Why? Because his word is life. 
His word is healing. His word will help you through every single problem that you have in your life. I'm testimony of that. I should not be doing today what I am doing today. What I do today is a miracle from God, and he's planted that. Why? Because I was willing. I just said, okay, God, I'm willing to do this. And I am. I am willing. It's not easy to do this. It's not easy to do Jumpstart. It's not easy to run a rehab. It's not easy to do sober living. Because sometimes I want to take people and shake them and tell them, stop it. Stop it. There's a better way. Stop this nonsense. Stop it. And you just want to put, you want to fill their vessels full of the knowledge of the Word of God because you know that that is the answer. But when they reject it and they continue to reject it and you continue to see them fall and have hurts and problems in their life, that's hard to deal with. It's hard. It was hard for me yesterday to walk in this house and feel the atmosphere of the home. Was I could feel, uh, it was filled with... Uh, depression and it was not a good atmosphere and I just wanted to shake them and said wake up it's time we need to wake up we are living in the end times right now today with everything that we've got going on and I'm asking each and every person in here to wake up grow up open up that instruction manual that God has given to you and fill your lives with the word of God because he can heal you he will heal you he will help you of everything that you have need of if you need money he'll give you prosperity the word says so he wants to prosper you he wants to, and wealth is, we should be the ones, the Christians should be the ones that have all of the wealth because then we can use it to help other people. We, that's what it's all about. I help so many people every single day. I cannot tell you how much money I have given away. I have given thousands of dollars away. I don't even think about it because I know God will return it to me tenfold, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. You want money? Give it away. You want to be a you. You need a friend. Be a friend to somebody. You need to be uh, sober. Be sober. But you got to participate. Participate. There are so many things out there today that you can participate in. And you go, well, I really don't want to do that. Well, you know what? Do it to help somebody else. Just do it to help somebody else. Get out of your bedrooms. Go sit in the living room. Carry on a conversation with somebody that needs your love today. And if you have anxiety, and I know that there's a real disorder called anxiety, but I also know that in the Word of God it says, do not worry and do not be anxious for anything. So I know that God has the answer. All doctors want to do is give you a prescription and fill you full of pills, and then we get addicted to that. We have the answer here. We have low energy neurofeedback. That will heal depression and anxiety. Come and do that. But you have to participate. You have to come and do it. There's a barbecue where you could have all had a great time, games, prizes, and not very many people came. And that's hurtful because you need to participate. Participation is the key to your longevity of sobriety. How long have you been sober? Yes, and I tell you, here's a young man that I could have wrung his neck. I wanted to wring his neck. And look at you. You're doing awesome. Good. You're participating. You're doing good. You know, and so it is, he almost got kicked out how many times? <laughs> he did get kicked out once. He did. That's true. He did. He did. <laughs> Four, five, six, ten, twelve, a half a dozen, I don't know. I think we were almost to number 13, and 13 I didn't want to do, so you got your act together and here you are today. <laughs> anyway, you have to, you get the gist, right? We need to focus and participate, but we have to do it through the Word of God. There's a scripture in the Bible that says, I thank God that He is effectually at work within me creating and energizing in me both the power and the desire 
to will and to work for his good pleasure, satisfaction, and delight. Oh, I want God to be satisfied with me. I want God to be delighted with me. I want his power to work in me so that I can share it with you. And that's where we all should be because we all should want him to be delighted in us, satisfied with our work. And it's his work. We just have to be willing. We just have to fake it until we make it. And God will be there to help you make it through. Who has a prayer request today? Yes, Marnie. Um, my, sorry. Um, my grandma, Grandma Mon, is 89. Um, she found out she has cancer on her chin. Oh. Okay. What's her name? Marie. Marie. All right. Yes, Dina. Um, I have a really good friend who's was uh, sober for 14 years and he relapsed. It took him seven years to get back in. Now he's totally gotten his life together, and um, he's also been diagnosed. He's my he's been diagnosed with a lot, a lot of things wrong with him. Um, so it's not looking really good for him. His name is Michael. Okay. Like that's good for him. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I'd like to pray for Barb. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And for Bonnie. Okay. All right, Billy. I'd like to ask for prayer for the residents of the Gate Recovery Center. And Mary's also Thanks. Thanks, Billy. Yes. Um, I'd like to pray for my kids. I get to see them this afternoon. I'm going to ask for a little, um, a little more time with them. Oh, good. So okay. pray that I get that. And I'd also like to say what a uh, blessing Dick is to me. I don't know why, but we just have these conversations, and uh, oh. I know he really lifts me up for some reason. So I want to thank Dick for being a part of the program. Oh, nice. Very good. Thank you, Ron. Yes. Um, I want to pray for my brother. He's just a Oh, very good. Well, uh, you're a fine example for him to follow after. This young lady right here, do you mind if I share something? Okay. Uh, for those of you that don't know, she came through New Beginnings Recovery Center. And uh, there was a time when I thought, oh, God, what do we got going on here now? You know? Uh, so anyway, she uh, graduated and went back home, right, for a period of time. Is working, has just celebrated, is it one or two? Oh. One month. And, or, I'm sorry, one year, one year and two months. One year and two months. Thankful that she spoke. She's so shy. She has a real fear of. She wanted me to say it, and I said, "Participate." Oh. <laughs> and so she did, and I'm proud of her. Because I know she has, has a big fear of speaking in front of people, and I said, "Nobody here." Yeah. Well, speaking of a big fear of speaking in front of people, I um, would never ever speak in front of people at all. It made me physically nauseated to do it. And so, you know, God can heal that too. Yes. My mom, she worries. She stresses things herself. Who are who is worried warts in here? Oh my gosh, look at this. Who has anxiety? Oh my goodness. Depression. Oh my gosh. Did you get anything out of the word today? Yes. Are you going to stop worrying and being anxious? You're going to try or you're going to? <laughs> I'm going to. You're going. There you go. That's the attitude. James. Yeah, I would like to pray for that. It's not always so easy to say that I have a question and other things like that. But I would like to pray for strength for that. You know, and it's hard, I know, when we are alone and we start having thoughts that of worry that bring anxiety and things like that, and, you know, we're alone. I know that it's hard. I've been there. It's hard to stop, but it is very possible. One of the things that will help is to get out of your environment, so go for a walk. When you go for a walk, pray, ask God to, to heal you of that, and He will. 
And you just need to make some positive affirmations and use the scriptures to do that with. Talk out loud. Sometimes we have to speak to the thing. It says, God said, God told us in the word, speak to the mountain. That doesn't mean whisper. It doesn't mean thinking. He said, speak. How do we speak? We open our mouth. We use our vocal cords and we speak out loud. So you speak to it and you tell it to leave. You tell it to go away, but you have to do it out, uh, out loud, out of your mouth. Tell it to go. And it will go. Uh, you ha it says resist, and it will go. You have to resist. Other prayer requests? Yes. Uh, this is not a prayer request, but in addition to what you're talking about, the Word of God and the Scriptures, we need to remember that Christ Himself is the Word. Thank you. Absolutely. So that relationship with Him will enable us to open the Bible. Thank you. That is awesome. Yes, awesome. I need to pray kind of away for myself. I'm like, I'm really happy I'm getting out, but at the same time, I'm kind of scared. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's nerve-wracking. It is. Yeah. Yes. I'd like to pray for the people that are fighting for um, the Dakota Access Pipeline through going, um, it's going to affect the Missouri River, which goes from Montana all the way down south. Um, their plan, the government is planning on drilling for oil, which contam contaminates the whole Missouri River, which will in turn affect all of our cattle, our main farmlands, and there are people all over the country, Native America, that are fighting to stop this from happening. Oh. So it's been going on for a while now, and we're just praying for a good outcome. Okay. All right. Very good. Yes. September 11th. Yeah. All the yeah. people who were affected and still are affected. That's yes. right. That's today, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, Brandon. So, for gratitude, um, I like to participate in your events and stuff, but actually, yesterday, just getting to know Oscar and Isaac and Dominic. Oh, yeah. Hey, getting involved with Chris. It was fun, and I feel blessed to yeah. Thank you. participate. Thank you. blessing. Yeah, for, for those of you that weren't there, I tell you, these men can throw a football. And and our very own Gretchen can throw a football. Men, watch out, because that girl can throw a ball. Right, Oscar? Yes, she can. She can. Yes. yes. I had to do a double take. I thought, my God. Wow. I couldn't even say you throw like a girl because she, she, she's too hard. I know. I know. I can't wait to buy you. All right. Anything else? Yes. Speak uh, really loud. Our own house. Thank you. I just want to see if Amber would get up and sing for us. Yeah, I would really like that too if Devon and Amber would just give us one little, one verse. One just. No. What? What? Yes, you were. Yes, you were too. You can just do it right there, Amber. No, no come on. Amber has a beautiful, beautiful voice. Uh, and her and Devon were harmonizing at the barbecue yesterday, and I had asked her if she would just do a little bit of it today. But we'd all love you to. Come on. All right, we won't make it. All right. All right, let's stand and pray. Father God, I just thank you for this day, Lord God, and we come to you with grateful hearts, Father God, that you give us treasure, Lord God, that is beyond anything that we could even think or imagine. And the treasure that you give to us, Father, is treasure that never will go away. It cannot be stolen. It cannot be rusted up or anything like that, Father. But you give us treasures in heaven, Lord. And Father, you heard all the prayer requests today for healing and for safety and for everything that um, people mentioned, Lord God. And Father God, I just thank you that you are quick to answer prayers. 
and that you will answer them even yet today. And Father God, we thank you for even those that had a mind to be here but were not here, Lord God, that you keep them in, wrapped around your loving arms, Father God, that you cause your angels to watch over them, Lord. And as we go today, Lord God, teach us your way and teach us about your treasure. And Father God, just keep us in your loving care. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.